Hello and welcome to another What Sold on eBay video. I'm your host, Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. I got an amazing video for you today. We are going to do our monthly sales report video, which is the top 10 sales we had in the month of April 2020 in our, in our charity eBay shop. And so uh, if you're new to the channel, definitely go down there, click the subscribe button, click the like button right now if you definitely enjoy these videos. We're gonna go through the top 10 items and we do have a bonus item as we can see here. We'll talk about that in just a second. So we're gonna go from the top 11 to the top one top item that sold in the month of April 2020 on eBay. Once again, I'm your host, Chris, with there's a Hustler. Let's get right into it. Today, uh, number 11 here, we have this Funko Pop rocks 1970s elvis now we talked about funko pops in the past and i have a video and i'll make sure that i'll link it up there so you definitely want to check out that video if you want to learn about funko pops and you don't know about them i've been talking about these for years people have been talking about these for years um you know you can definitely find some retired vaulted ones that's what they're called so you know instead of retired in the funko world they say vaulted and uh, as you can see here this is a really rare one uh, now, there's some fakes out there, I'm going to say, uh, for some of these rare ones, but you'll have to go and look at that. There's not too many of them, but they're out there. And so if you ever get one of these high-end Plunko Pops, just look them up, compare them to ones that have sold. And usually there's something off with either the printing of, you know, the box or there's just some other kind of quality issues. And usually you can tell them apart when you see them side by side from a fake one. Uh, I don't want to get everyone all excited or anything or, you know, get, you know, too worried about uh fake funko pops but they're out there i just want to let you know um that they're out there so but if you find one of these things more than likely it's going to be legit um you know if you go to a dealer and you see something like this that's like super cheap uh, like way off price then that could be something that's questionable but if you go to a garage sale and someone's selling this for like five bucks uh, two dollars and it's worth you know a couple hundred dollars uh, then it's something to look at. Anyways, this sold for $287. We did take a best offer for this. Like I said, Funko Pops, they're out there. They're collectible. Um, the market's kind of cooling down a little bit, but, you know, it's still a good market. I wouldn't get into it now if you're buying new stuff, thinking that it's going to be worth money later, um, because right now they overproduce this stuff. And um, you will find some stuff that's new that if you put it away for five years, it might be worth a little bit later. Uh, but those days are, are definitely numbered. So, like I said, take, take that advice for what it's worth. Um, I definitely wouldn't get into it for investment purposes. Uh, number 10, we have this 18 karat gold 750 solid yellow gold fi uh, filigree hoop earrings. 3.2 grams, as we can see here. We got the nice gram scale photo, which I always love to do for any of the jewelry stuff that's of value. Uh, it's Mark 750, which I think, I want to say that's European code, or that could be Russian code for uh, 18 karat gold. Now, there's different codes. I think the 14 karat's 500, but I could be wrong. Uh, correct me in the in the comments. I'll have to double look at that. But 750, if you see that stamped, uh, means 18 karat gold. And, of course, this was tested. Uh, what's nice about this, these pieces is that um, they're solid, which they don't have any kind of enamel or any kind of other things on them, which kind of deters some, because there's lots of people that buy this just for the metal content. Uh, as a matter of fact, I would say 80% of the jewelry buyers are buying jewelry like this just because of the metal content, not because uh, they're going to wear it. So it's a huge, uh, you know, percentage of people that are buying this just for the gold content, whether or not they're just saving it, they're going to melt it down, et cetera, et cetera. But you will find some jewelry buyers uh, that are buying it for the jewelry itself um, but for the most part you're going to sell a lot of this solid gold or silver uh, for around spot value about basically how much it's worth um, there's tons of gold people uh, we have the same regular gold people that come and send us offers all the time on our gold pieces like almost in five minutes of listing this stuff you will see like the same people trying to lowball us on the stuff which i'm sure that's what they do for a date for their full-time job or whatever they just lowball people for their gold uh, because what's nice about gold is it actually has a set price. It, you know, it fluctuates every day. Price goes up and down. But um, it's always worth that much money. You can, it, it, gold's always going to be worth the price someone's willing to pay for it. Not like a Funko Pop or something like that that's basically has no intrinsic value. Um, you know, this stuff you can easily, if you needed to ever sell it, you could sell it for pretty much what you paid for it. And that's why people lowball so they can make a profit. Anyways, I spent too, too, much, too long on this. 
Uh, let me see what we sold this total for. Uh, this sold for a total of two hundred and twenty-eight dollars. So definitely a great sale here. And next up, we have this Veronica Lake. This original hand signed eleven by fourteen photo. Huge photo, 11 by 14, in pretty good shape. We had actually got a stack of these. There was probably like a dozen uh, different photos, and we do have some of them up still for um, sale. We have a Bob Hope one, I think, and uh, ah, was it Gene Kelly? There were some other ones, some, some really high-end um, signatures that I'm surprised I haven't sold yet. Now, these aren't authenticated, though I did take a look at them, and to me, they, they look like you know they were legitimate. Um, and this... Uh, Veronica Lake one was just amazing. Just the whole thing was really good. Um, if we probably got this authenticated, which, you know, sometimes that costs a lot of money to get something authenticated. It probably could have went for triple this value. And so I think that's what that's what keeps a lot of those collectors away from, especially like the Bob Hope ones and things that we have for sale. Um, they're not authenticated, so people don't, you know, they want something that's authenticated because it adds a tremendous amount to the value in some some cases. But I do feel uh, fairly confident that the collectors that did buy this, um, you know, this did go for $214 plus shipping. And so, um, like I said, and there was like a lot of great tells in these signatures that to me when I looked at, when I researched Veronica Lake signatures that were legit, uh, especially a little heart up there, the way the, the V's come across. So to me, everything looked le look legitimate to me. But I always say in our condition signature has not been authenticated because honestly even forgers are really good at um being able to forge a signature i mean there's tons of sports uh, sports stuff i would i would definitely take another look at but celebrities and things like that especially these older ones you know people do forge them but they're they're likely uncommon for people to, to spend the time to do that unless it's like a really uh, well-known deceased uh like clark gable or something like that so uh, this sold for a total of $240.77. It was a great sale. And like I said, we have other photos too. I'm surprised the Bob Hope and the other ones didn't sell because they're more well-known names, uh, especially there's some other uh, actresses that were pretty good. So uh, definitely go and check out our store if you want to see some of those. Send us an offer. Uh, next up, we have this antique vintage Royal Bayreuth Tapestry Cabbage Rose Vase from 1930. This is a 6.5-inch vase 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 tomato tomato as you can see there there is the mark now with pottery and everything i've talked about this a million times before in the past it's really easy to look up uh, usually pottery will have a, a stamping on the bottom i mean some of the antique vintage kind of asian um, chinese pots won't won't have uh, a marking sometimes though you know they do have markings but what i'm saying is a lot of information is going to be on the bottom of the ceramic piece whether it be a, a vase or anything like that a bowl uh every once in a while you'll see some some imprint imprinting on the foot on the side there but it's not usually there it's usually on the very bottom so uh, ceramic stuff's very easy to look up and once again you want to look for chips flea bites uh, all that kind of stuff when you're uh, definitely looking at this kind of uh, this kind of things because the you know any kind of damage to pottery will dramatically decrease the price by a lot so you definitely want to make sure it's in a good shape if you're going to pay up for any of this kind of stuff. Uh, this sold for a total of $249.68. This was a really, really great sale. Uh, next up, we have this Sydney Glenn Fossum Sid oil on board. This is a 33 across uh, from, uh, this is a Smithsonian artist, which means that his paintings are, or some of his paintings are in the Smithsonian, which you know can add a lot of value to a particular artist that means that you know that that they were well enough known that their works are, are hanging in the smithsonian uh this is a photo of uh San, this uh smithsonian san francisco uh, as you can see here there's fossum 1958 this is really easy to look up as you can see here uh, you can go to askart.com look up the last names if you have any pieces of art and you can start from your start your research there uh, we had this for a while. This was something that was donated that was in a frame. I took it out of the frame because the frame was pretty beat up. And I'll do that from time to time. We'll be take some of these things out of frames. Now, in the art world, I don't suggest that because the frames actually could be worth more than the art sometimes. But this uh, frame was heavily damaged and it wasn't worth repairing or it didn't have any significant value. So 
uh, we took it out. We try to get, um, I think we, I first originally listed this at like $600 and we've had it up for, a, for a couple months or actually longer than that. Uh, we did take a best offer for uh, 200 and something and uh, it did sell for a total of 249.99. So art is still out there. This stuff you can find at garage sales and even uh, uh, thrift stores like Goodwill sometimes, um, they're not too uh, keen up on art. You know, I've found pieces of art in Goodwills before and we've talked about that before in the past. So if you go, just go to askart.com, you look up the last name, that should be like your initial research and then you can go from there. Uh, next up, we have this these vintage 1980s home interior. These are Homeco porcelain figure lots. This is a huge lot. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this thing was such a pain in the ass to ship. I can't tell you. Um, we had to ship this in multiple packages because of uh, the duck wings. Um, you know, you you don't want to basically pack all this stuff up in one box. It, it just something's gonna break. That's just how this is the nature of this. Um, but definitely look out for these, for these, um, this, I think it's Homeco. Let me look at the thing here. Yeah, it says right there, uh, Homeco, 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 1986, made in Mexico. Uh, masterpiece collections. Now, usually they aren't, they aren't marked, but luckily some of these, um, have pretty much, I think pretty much all these have their original tags, which is pretty interesting. Uh, we could have, I guess, probably sold these individually and made a little bit more money, but it was just easier just to, it was easier to list this way, but it wasn't easier to ship this way. So take it, take that for what it's worth. If I would have to do this over again, I would have sold these pieces uh, individually. But time was of the essence when it came to this stuff, and we did get a good uh, price for the whole lot. Uh, this sold for a total of two hundred and fifty-four dollars and forty cents. And like I said, I don't wish shipping of this on anyone for sure. Uh, next up, we have this Fire and Light Aurora recycled green glass vase. This is signed, as you can see here, with any kind of ceramics or gloss. Gloss, glass. You want to look underneath. Where is the piece? There it is. Uh, we've talked about this stuff before in the past. That you know, usually glass stuff will have etchings on the side. You're, now you're going to struggle to to try to read that kind of thing, but you know, if you know your glass, you know what it is. And this actually sold for a really good price. And this is the stuff that you can find at garage sales and estate sales all day long, because people just look at this and they just think it's a cheap vase. But it's actually it has some substantial value, and there's some vases like this that actually go for uh, thousands of dollars, and they just look like regular pieces of glass that people would probably pass up if they didn't know what they were looking at. Uh, this sold for a total of two hundred and seventy-nine dollars and thirty-seven cents. It's a great sale, great vase. These things are easy to ship. You know, they're all one solid piece. You just have to bubble wrap them correctly, and you should be good to go. Uh, next up, we have this 10 karat solid gold square cut smoky quartz. That's a mouthful. 13.82 grams, which most of it was a stone. Uh, even the stone had some chips in it. I think I actually showed a photo of that. Yeah, it has some chips in it. Uh, probably glass, you know, quartz, you know, something that's very easily breakable. Uh, if you see any kind of chips or any kind of, anything like this on, on any of these kind of stones, that usually means it's like not like a, you know, like a diamond's not going to chip like this. It would take some extreme, extreme pressure to chip a diamond like this. So when you see this kind of stuff, especially rough around the edges like this, it usually determines that it's not going to be a super valuable um, stone. But this sold because of the content of the ring, to be honest. Uh, 10, 10 karat gold, even though it's probably one of the lowest ratings of gold. I think I've seen 8 before, 8K, but that's very rare. Um, you could see here that... Um, you could see some of the the welding that has that was done putting this together. Uh, now some jewelers they'll use like uh, solder to like weld some of these things together, and so this is why you could see the little silver silvery parts on here where it was soldered together. Um, and I'm not a jeweler, and I'm pretty sure there's so, there's gold colored solder, but this was kind of sloppily put together. Um, but anyways, it sold for a good price because of the the gold content. Like I said, gold precious metals sell very well, they're very fast. They're easy to determine the price, ex except for something like this, because you have no idea what the stone's weight, what the weight of the stone is, unless you pulled this out. Uh, but anyways, this sold for a total of $286.32. We did take a best offer for this, as we can see here. Yep. Uh, next up, we have this antique Silver War. Silver War. I keep saying this with this thing. Antique Chinese Silver Civil Rank Badge. This is a gold tapestry. As you can see here, it's got some gold 
waving in here and I'm shaking around. I'm wondering if there's an earthquake happening right now. No, it's just me moving around. Anyways, uh, the Asian art market is hugely on fire right now. As you can see here, there's some nice uh, brass handles. Those things are very well done. And look at the back. You can tell this has got some age to it just by looking at the back. Um, I, like I said, I don't know too much about this particular piece, though I know that it's sold for a pretty good amount of money. And any Asian art stuff, you should take a double double look at, especially if you have any of this kind of stuff in your death piles. You know, this stuff like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, wouldn't even reach this price. But um, there's a lot of factors, geopolitical, like there's a lot of history. There's a lot of things uh, for the reason why uh, the art market has exploded. The Chinese art market and the Asian art market exploded over the last five to 10 years. Uh, mostly because, you know, communist China is, you know, the people are getting a little bit more money in their pocket. Uh, back in the 80s, it was pretty much like slave labor, though they, you know, they have slave labor now still. Well, I want to call it slave labor. You know, they get paid, but it's like eight cents an hour or something ridiculous. But uh, wages have gone up uh, tremendously over the last 10 years. So there's a lot of people that have uh, money to spend, especially in China. And some of the, you know, they're starting to uh, become a middle class emergence and people are buying stuff from their from their heritage. And that's what's basically fueling a lot of this market is uh, the Chinese uh, mi the building of the middle class and the upper middle class. I, like I said, I God, I, 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 I'm going to stop. I can go on and on and on about every single one of these things. Uh, oh, yeah. For what did this sell for? That's a good question. Thanks. I'm glad I read your mind. Uh, this sold for a total of $439. Like I said, uh, the Asian art market is going to be one of the hardest things to research. So uh, if you have a friend or, or, or know someone that knows about this stuff, you should probably reach out. Because you don't want to sell something for $100 that's worth $100,000, which could totally happen. There was a lady that bought a $3 million um, Ming bowl that if you looked at it, you would be like, this is just a regular bowl. What? It is worth $3 million. She bought a, a garage sale. Actually, let's look that up real quick. Let's see. Ming bowl. Garage sale. I can't spell today. <laughs> three dollars 2.2 million sorry i thought i thought it was three million so what's 800 thousand right check this out someone bought this at a garage sale for three bucks and it sold for 2.2 million dollars see this look at this i mean when you look at this now it looks pretty you know it does look like it's got some age and it's got some some history and it's old but how many times have you passed something up like this at a garage sale or estate sale thinking it was just junk? Anyways, you might have passed up a $2.2 million bowl. Uh, number two, we have this Dermaflash Essentials Replenishment Kit. Uh, this is on the list because we sold 12 of these. Well, we sold 14 of these total, but in April we sold 12 of these for a total of uh, $501. So this makes the, the list. This is number two, by the way. We're going to have number one coming up here pretty soon, so you definitely want to stay tuned for that. Uh, they sold out relatively quickly at the at the $30 price point plus a 999 shipping. Uh, we talked about this kind of stuff before in the past, these kind of beauty refill kits. Now, there is a little bit of caveat. Sometimes you can't sell some of this stuff because it's licensed and it could be um, Vero. And also some of this health and beauty stuff expires. And so you don't want to you don't want to go down that road at all either. But I'm just saying if you ever come across this kind of stuff, just double and triple check everything before you list it because even even with now uh with stuff like beauty health and beauty being you know stuff that's that's opened you definitely don't want to sell any used stuff unless it's like perfume or something like that um i would stay away from any of this beauty stuff that's used but that's just me but anyways uh dermaflash it's a bolo brand to look out for uh, you're probably not going to come across this stuff too often but i'm just saying this stuff this kind of stuff just like this is out there and like I said, this sold for a total of $501, the 12 that we sold in April. So that was pretty good. Uh, and the number one item today is this humongous 14 karat jewelry lot, 42 grams total. As we can see here, there's different stones and things like that. Some nice pieces. There's some diamond stuff in there. Uh, looks like we have uh, sapphires, some pearls, some solid gold brooches, which I love solid gold brooches, especially the, I think this is like a lightning bug. Yeah, the lightning bug was 14K. I mean, this this is all 14K. 
Uh, it wasn't all marked. I had to use my jewelry tester on some of this stuff. These are diamonds. Those are legit. Those are diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. Uh, this jade piece, I'm not completely sure this is 100% real, but the gold sure the hell was. And as you can see here, there's some broken pieces. This is just like a general smorgasbord of stuff, all tested, all tested 14K. Uh, lotted together. This sold for a total of $1,375. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Uh, my suggestion, if you ever, if you are a full-time reseller and you come across scrap gold from time to time, just put it in a box. Wait till you get a good amount of it. Uh, because sometimes the price of gold fluctuates like hundreds of dollars in a day. So, you know, this lot that sold for $1,300 today, if I wait, waited for the price of gold to go up, it could have sold for $1,500 or $1,600. So you kind of want to play the market when you're dealing into high-end gold, especially weighted, weighted stuff, like if it gets into the, you know, the... Um, the multi grams of, of of scrap you might want to play the gold game uh, waiting for the good price because it does fluctuate and sometimes it fluctuates down i mean uh you have to play the game you have to know what you're doing and like i said uh, this is a very good lot like i said this sold for a total of three uh, 1375 bucks this was our top selling item for the month of april uh, once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. If you enjoyed this video, definitely go down there, click the like button. If you stayed all the way to the end, uh, tell me in the comments below that you stayed all the way to the end because, like, there's a lot of people that don't even see the very end, which is unfortunate because there's some really nice stuff in here you can probably learn about. Uh, and once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. I appreciate your time, and we'll see you next time. Take care.